Welcome to UC Tech Chat, where we discuss business technology, unified communications, and more for small and medium businesses. I'm your host, Brian Ferguson. And I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. Thank you for joining us. Today on UC Tech Chat, we'll be discussing BYOD, or Bring Your Own Device. Companies all over the world are running to BYOD policies to save money and for lots of other benefits. We'll provide some insight and information to help your company make the jump. Later, we'll talk to Julie Webb as she answers questions from the community in Julie's inbox. And at the end of the show, we'll not only discuss mobile devices, but we'll discuss wearable devices. That sounds great. Let's get started. BYOD is a policy implemented by many businesses to increase workforce productivity. Let's first explain BYOD and then discuss the benefits. So BYOD, or Bring Your Own Device, is a very clear and concise written document that gives employees clear guidelines of what they can and can't do with devices that they bring to work. Those devices include smartphones and tablets, and those devices really make it easier for them to work remotely and just to be more flexible. There are huge benefits to a BYOD policy. The advancements in mobile devices and unified communications has also improved usage of BYOD. Mobile applications make it easier to use employee-owned devices in the workplace. So many business apps are now available in mobile applications to, that make it a lot easier for them to work as well. CRM applications, voicemail, video are all available and make it a lot easier. Even mobile apps and mobile soft phones that integrate with your phone system, providing advanced feature functionality from your mobile device. So if you're choosing to deploy a BYOD policy, there are a variety of benefits that you're going to see, including cost savings and greater customer service. First, let's explore cost savings. Employee provided devices means no hardware costs for the company. Also, with mobile plans becoming more affordable, with unlimited data plans, unlimited cellular plans, that's not as big of a concern as well. You might also even be able to replace the desk phone. So travel and moving expenses can also be reduced. If you hire a new employee on the other side of the country, no longer do you have to provide physical connections or physical office space for them. They can use their own device, work from home, and you see those immediate cost savings. Also think of a major weather event. You can be home and safe and productive at the same time. And there's no need for a laptop, a VPN, uh, either software client, hardware device, and no need to worry about the complexities of managing a network. So Jason, another huge cost savings is scalability. BYOD can reduce office infrastructure, eliminate desk phones, eliminate physical cabling, eliminate VPN and other networking complexities. With Voice over IP, adding a user is simple and easy, regardless whether on-site, in the cloud, or remote. So how about the human element? The American Psychological Association study said mobile workers reported more job satisfaction, less motivation to leave, less stress, improved work-family balance, and higher performance reviews by their supervisors. So another major benefit is retention and recruitment for the company. Companies can now retain much, many more of their employees because they can provide flexible work options, uh, which are very attractive to employees. And then from a recruitment standpoint, no longer are companies uh, tied to geographic areas of where their offices are located. They can now recruit from anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. Uh, it really opens them up to a much wider talent pool. For the company, fewer resources spent on training is typically a benefit as well. The reward for the business is a good standing within the community and an overall opinion from others that it's a great place to work. In turn, as Brian already mentioned, it allows you to recruit top tier talent both locally and globally. So BYOD is not without its risks. Uh, there are several things that have to be considered uh, before BYOD is implemented. Um, one is the amount of IT management that's involved. There's going to be an increased amount of complexity that needs to be addressed. Uh, the next are data breaches. It is possible because you have um, personal devices involved that you know, your data is not as secure as it was before, so that needs to be addressed. Also, you have shared devices. People are now sharing their devices at home with their children and or other people, and so you need to have that in mind, as well as lawsuits. Who owns that information? Can you get access to it? All of that needs to be addressed within your policy. And as Brian mentioned, it's critical to have a detailed BYOD policy for many of those reasons. So great. Now let's turn it over to Julie Webb, our VoIP expert, as she answers a question from the community in Julie's inbox. Julie? Thank you, Brian and Jason, and thank you everyone for joining us. Today's question comes from Billy C. from Pompano Beach, Florida. Billy asks, what should I expect in a BYOD policy from my work? 
That's a great question, Billy. When participating in a BYOD policy, make sure your company has a policy with well-written BYOD guidelines. Well-written guidelines will include the expectations of the activities workers will be doing with their devices. A company should consider the benefits of remote access to services as well as long-term benefits to the company. Well-developed guidelines should be specific to the business and address rules about usage and security while at work and after hours. It should also include what happens to applications and data on a mobile device after an employee should leave the company. Thank you for the question, Billy. Okay, Brian and Jason, I have a question for you. BYOD is gaining in popularity. What are some less conventional devices you can bring to work? I am talking fashion. I am talking wearable devices. Good question, Julie, and thank you. So wearable smart devices, wow. That reminds me of the day that you and I wore, both wore our keyboard pants to work a few years ago. You remember that? Indeed, that was awkward. Well, let's see. Jason, what are some less conventional uh, devices that people can wear to work? The first thing that comes to mind is, of course, Google Glass. It's like wearing your smartphone on your head. Okay, I'll go from head to toes uh, with smart socks, actually smarter socks. So smart socks have a communication button built in that pairs it with a significant other and works with your iPhone. So now your iPhone knows all sorts of details about your socks and where the, the other lives. From blacksocks.com. The stiletto. The stiletto is a high-tech wearable, though at the moment I can't think of anything I would wear it with. Stiletto claims to be the ultimate lifestyle security wearable. Stiletto is a charm for a bracelet or a necklace that protects your phone and other valuables from theft, receives texts, calls, and other alerts, and speaks to 911 for you at the press of a button. Available from stiletto.is. Next, we have the GoPro 4, the cinema quality camera with built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It can be worn anywhere and on various different mounts. Inward facing for selfies and outward facing for action shots. Another cool device is the ring from Logbar. By making simple gestures while wearing Logbar's ring, the company claims you can do things like turn your lights on and off and control your TV. The technology premiered at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Learn more at logbar.jp. Wow, so many choices. Let us know what your favorite wearable tech is at hashtag UC Tech Chat. And from all of us at UC Tech Chat, thank you for viewing and join us next time.